Hello Nuggets. Right, so today I wanted to talk about, uh, this morning I started playing a little bit of Football Manager and uh, I thought, well, talk about something you love. And I love this game. Um, I'm still playing Football Manager 19. I didn't buy 20. <laughs> Just because, you know, it comes out every year, which I think is good for a development team. People complain about that, like the Madden stuff and the basketball games. And they complain about the yearly thing, which... I guess is if you look at it purely just from the consumer point of view, it makes sense to complain about it. It seems like money grubbing, but from the developer's point of view, it's an awesome model. It's a really good model because you can always skip a year, right? If you don't want to buy it, skip a year. But they need that consistent income. And I think Football Manager is a really good example of a game that consistently gets better. It's very rare they put a step wrong. Sometimes, sure, there are things that are not great. They made a couple of mistakes in 20, but... Uh, which is one of the reasons I didn't buy it. But um, I've pre-ordered 2021. Um, it's the only game I ever pre-order, by the way. That and anything by Ed McMillan. <laughs> Ed McMullen. Oh, shit, I've got his name wrong. Um, the Binding of Isaac guy. Um, and subset games, also. <laughs> FTL. But apart from those three... Oh, I don't know. Apart from those three, um, I the only ones I pre-order really is FM. Um, because I love the game... It's an extraordinary achievement in gaming. It's just, it's so deep. It's so complex. There's so much going on. You will put thousands of hours into this game before you know it. You're like, oh my God, I've been in this world forever. Um, so I pre-ordered it. And I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I do a video on what I want to see in 2021? Now, uh, beta will be coming up, and I should be part of the beta, but beta will be coming up in, I think, like a couple of weeks. Um, so it's too late. There's not, none of this is going to happen. But it's nice to put it out there anyway. And also, if football manager players do this, right? This is kind of the thing you do. You talk about things you want to see. And I'm sure at some level, um, Miles and the guys over at Sports Interactive, Miles, my good buddy Miles, the people at Sports Interactive, um, probably do watch this and pro probably do keep a list of things. And they have their own list as well. But I'm sure it has some level of influence because they do engage with the community and they do feel accessible. At least they feel accessible. You know, the game has improved and for the most part, the community loves it for what it is. There's not that many complaints. Here's what I want to see. Okay. Um, I would love to see an improvement to the set pieces. I think that they're really underrepresented in the game. And also, apart from anything else, it should be a really enjoyable part of the game. You know, you're sculpting this football team, right? You sculpt the tactics, you sculpt the training of the players, the way they play within that tactics, those tactics. You you find players that specifically fit the role that you want. Or if you just get lucky and get an amazing player, you build the team around that player. So you're really involved in the sculpting of everything that happens in this football club except the set pieces, which is really weird. Like, they have an editor, but it's so limiting and also very poorly implemented. Like, it's really confusing. It's a very confusing editor. And it's got lots of bugs in it and things that, you know, it doesn't save it properly and it doesn't automatically add them. And you can't save set pieces specifically for types of formation. I mean, you can, you can save it, but you have to manually load it every time. I would like to make a tactic save it and with that save is all of these very specific set pieces which you kind of honestly you kind of can do that but it's just it's not curated as well it's it's not um very easy to save all of the stuff that you want to do with set pieces and honestly more importantly it's just so ugly to use and limited control. Like, I want to be able to tell specific players to do specific things. And it's a bit more generalized like that than that. It's like, cover the back post area. And also, you're limited to what they decide you can do. Like, I might want to say, actually, I want this guy to hover right in this area here. Right? Or I want this corner to be kicked specifically to this spot. You know? Um, and obviously, there's going to be variants. Players will miss when they try and do that, particularly in lower leagues and stuff like that. But I would like to sculpt the set pieces. I'd like to feel a more integral part of it. Um, and that would include being more involved in the training, right? So there's a training thing where you can set up, hey, let's focus on set pieces for a while, but it's very generic again. I would like to say, let's focus on this specific set of set pieces. I want to go through these very specific ones that we've set up so we can get better at them. 
I think it would really add a lot to the game. And it would also add a lot to the... There's a tactic variable um, of play for set pieces, right? And right now, it's kind of... If you happen to have a good free kick taker, take go for it. I would like that variable, that setting, to become relevant based on the amount of energy you've put into the set pieces. And right now, they're just kind of unrelated. They're just, do you have someone who can take free kicks? Then you should probably play for set pieces if you're not a good team. You know. So set pieces, that whole system needs an overhaul. Um, this one has frustrated me for a while. Um, transferring in the lower leagues is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. No one buys anything from you. They do seem to buy them from other people, but you can't sell players. It's really hard to get any teams interested. Like you can have, I've had cases where I've had players who are worth like 25, 30,000, which in lower leagues is a lot, right? And they're playing. Here's the thing, they're playing games. And I will put them up, transfer list them, no interest. I'll transfer list them for half value, no interest. For zero, free transfer, you can have them, no interest. If I sometimes, if I say, okay, you can have them for free and I'll pay 50% of the wages, then a couple of teams will pop up and go, oh, all right, we'll take him. It's just not authentic, it's not realistic to me. And it's also really frustrating because if you start a team in the lower leagues, then part of the joy is building the team. And what invariably happens is you can't build the team for at least one or two years because there's contracts in place with crappy players that you don't want and no one will buy. So you just kind of, all right, well, I, I guess we're not fixing this for a while. We're just playing with the team we have. Um, and I think part of the problem is that when the database first forms, when you start the game, those transfers have all just been made. So all of the players in the team, whatever team you take over, have just been given new contracts. And I think other teams are not buying because they just, like you, they just have a new team. They're just formed together. Um, but whatever the reason is that causes it, it's a frustration for the player, for the user, right? It's annoying that the transfer window is in lower leagues is pretty bad throughout your entire time in lower leagues. And in the first couple of seasons, it's a fucking nightmare. So uh, I think that should be overhauled. Okay. Right. This is very centric to me being a game writer. But uh, I think we need more interactions with the players. I, it gets very repetitive. The way you talk to the players feels very repetitive. And this game is so personal. Like, it does such a great job of connecting you to the club, right? And sometimes to certain players. Like, sometimes the interactions just happen to work in the right way and you feel a connection to player, particularly if they're playing really well, you know. And actually, you feel a connection to a player if they turn out to be a real pain in the ass as well. Like, the nemesis is fine. That's I enjoy that period as well. But it's more that it lucks into the sequence of events rather than being a sculptive narrative. You know, I want to be able to talk to players and talk to them about putting them in a new position, right? Like, right now, you can say, like, I'm very pleased with your adaptation to a new position. But that comes up as an option on many different things, regardless of whether they're in a new position. Um, and also, it's just the generic response. I would like to talk to a player about training for a position and that player to have an opinion about it. Now, that sounds pretty deep, but there's a lot of stats here. You could have a new hidden um, uh, uh, stat for, I don't know, stubbornness, uh, willingness to change. I mean, I don't know what it would be specifically. I haven't thought that deeply about it. But it doesn't seem like it would be impossible to add some interactions to the players where the players personalized response isn't just based on their personality right now they have like ambitious combative and stuff like that um but i think it could go a little bit deeper than that things like discussing new training positions for them um promises to them the promises system is really ugly right now like it's so easy in the game to end up after an interaction and look at your home tab and go i made a pro i didn't make a promise i didn't promise to play him for six months like, you know, a player's not playing well and you're like, you want to have a conversation with them and say, well, you're not playing well. And they're like, please give me another chance. You're like, all right, I'll give you a little run out. For you, you've made a promise that's going to last six months. That's not what I wanted. I want to be able to specifically say, I'm going to give you three games in a row. I'm going to see how you do, right? Or I'm going to um, promise you the cup matches. And when they say no, you can say, well, what would you like in return? Some form of back and forth. It feels... 
a little bit like a hit and miss game. It doesn't feel like I'm actually talking to the players. It feels like I'm just trying to match the right piece of puzzle to the right response. Does that make sense? It's not a narrative I'm playing. It's a puzzle game. And I don't like that. I want it to be a narrative, which is complex, but it's not a complex data structure. It's just a lot of data, right? You would have to write an enormous database of potential uh, narrative paths. But I've done that. Throughout my, they should hire me, by the way. Miles, if you're watching this, Sports Interactive should hire me. I've done this a lot in my career, so it's not that hard to do. And I know, Dev, I'm a dev, it's not that hard to implement. But it is a lot of work, and they have a lot of things to cover, and the game is deep. But I would love to see that. Um, oh, and also, just on that, with the interaction on players, specific praise and criticism. Like, you can right now, you can praise or criticize their conduct. You can praise or criticize their playing and you can praise or criticize their training i'd like to get deeper into that like recent form you can praise but what if the players played an 8.3 a 6.1 and 8.3 what do you do there i feel like i'm sure the game knows what is a good answer but as the manager and the player of the game i i don't i want to be able to say the last game was good that you picked it up again or what was the, or rather say something like watch those dips in form I don't know, that's a bit of a bad example. It's more about wanting to be personalizing my experience with the players, right? Specifying the praise and criticism, specifying scoring more goals, getting better at, here's a good example, right? Getting better at tackling, working on your passing, right? Like actually talking to the players and saying, this area of your game needs to improve. When they're like, you're not playing me enough, Rather than just saying, I'll give you a run out, actually praise or criticize the problems with their game and let them respond to it. Well, you know what? Get better at tackling. I'll put you in the team, right? Pick up your, your fitness levels. They're really bad. I'll put you in the team. Stuff like that needs to be improved. Okay. And then second on the narrative thing is just more th narrative threads in general. So they repeat. One of the problems with Sports Interactive creating such a fantastic game is people play it a lot. I mean, thousands of hours invested in this game, you're going to start seeing repeats. So this is a hard one to cover, but I kind of feel like they need to have some really unique narrative threads, some journeys that go on. And again, this data is not complex. It's simple, right? It's not a complex data structure. It doesn't need to change the entire game. It just needs for you to have ongoing relationships. Like, for example... I would like to be able to have a conversation with a player that was once in my team and then I sold, right? Or they left. Whether that's a good or a bad relationship, I would like to be able to reach out. And I can't speak to any player that isn't on my team. But I would love the game to keep a history of everyone I've interacted with and no matter where I am going, to be able to have a conversation with them and have a narrative thread that kicks off from that. I don't think that's that hard to do. I think it is hard if the measure is, is it a lot of work? Yes, it's a huge amount of work. That's why you hire me. But um, more narrative threads in general. I want to, you know, the world news, the, the reporters. I want to build up the relationship. Like, we have relationships with reporters, but you don't ever feel it in the game. Like, you don't remember the reporter's name. I'd like to remember if there's a reporter out there, particularly one who hates me. Right? I think that would be interesting to, like, pinpoint that when a question comes up I want to know that it's the guy that I hate and it's the guy that hates me you know because it kind of works with agents right although it doesn't highlight when a player's agent doesn't like you you know if a player's agent doesn't like you the game is affected right so I would like to see at some level your relationship with other managers and relationship with reporters and the world in general to have more narrative threads more unusual things like there is one in the game right now where you can have a son in the game and it's a great very rare thing that happens it needs more of those right it needs more of those moments okay it's just going to be a one-liner. Match engine improvements. Okay, everyone says that all the time. But yeah, it does need to get better. It's really fucking good. It's very impressive what they do. But they should never stop working on it. Because it is a hugely enjoyable part of the game. To the old school 2Ders, the, the 2D ultra fans, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm talking about the 3D engine. Um, I love watching the game. But... Because of the limited scope of the animations and, and the nature of the, you know, the, the look of it, the look of the game, it's not beautiful to watch, right? 
it, you watch it because you kind of have to watch it and you want to see some things happening. I'd like it to be the game to be so good that you want to watch it on extended highlights. But right now, you just want to watch it on key highlights once you've sorted out your tactic. Just like get the game over and done with like, oh, that's a good goal. Oh, that was a nice goal. I'd like to see the more... The, the actual game be enjoyable to watch. And it's not necessarily. Okay, that wasn't one line. Uh, this is a quick one. Um, funding your own courses for coaching. It's kind of, it's such an annoying part of the game. It's such a small part of the game and it doesn't really matter that much. But it's just such a frustrating thing because it doesn't make any logical sense. Like a coaching course will cost, I don't know, 600, 900 pounds, right? And you go to the board and you ask them to pay for a coaching course, and they say, I'm sorry, we can't, we don't have the money. You should be able to buy the course. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous that you can't. I don't, it limits your career. That interaction limits your career, and that's annoying. That's really frustrating. You should definitely be able to go get that coaching course and pay for it yourself. Now, in order to pay for it yourself, you would need to do the last thing on the list, which is the personal wealth and score. I feel like the game needs some personal measure it kind of already has personal measures of the player's ability, of the user's ability as a manager. But I feel like it needs a little bit more. Like, I want to know if I'm amassing a fortune, right? Like, it's going to sound ridiculous, but it's such an engaging game. It draws you so much into the world. Um, and some YouTube streamers do this, by the way. When they get a new game, a, a, a new manager job, they'll go on Google Maps and they'll show a, a house that they're buying or they'll they'll invest in, hey, I'm in Rotterdam. Let's see what life's like in Rotterdam. Um, some metric to account for the cost of living versus where you are versus what expenses you are at a very, very simple level would be really interesting. And out of your personal re, re, um, personal fortune, you could pay for coaching courses or other things that can then be added to the game. It's not a simulator of being a manager outside of the football club. I do get that. But just some little things like, um, this is an obscure link, but papers, please, right? Papers, please, you check books, right? And you checked, um, you were in a communist country, communist bloc, and you were checking whether or not ID matched the description. But then at the end of each round of each day, um, you had to pay for your rent. You had to decide whether to spend money on healthcare for your family or not. You had to pay for heat and food and stuff like that. But when I say stuff like that, that was about it. It was very small and very simple. And some very, very lightweight system. Again, it's just color. It's just narrative to add to the scope of this thing. I would like to see my own page. Like right now you have a home page um, I've got it up, that's what I'm looking at. You have a homepage which shows you a little bit about your profile and like who you are and what you know about your, what there is to know about yourself. But it's only about the game. I would love to see one little section here that says personal fortune, current living condition, favorite city. I don't know, like, I want to know my favorite personnels. I want to know my favorite place to live. I, wanna, I want some extent of what the player's score is. <laughs> How well they're doing. Oh, I've lost the uh, my list. Um, so, yeah, I'd really like to see that as well. Um, I don't know if you can do score. There is a scoring system in the game, actually. I just don't understand it. It's it's like it's in multiplayer. I say, Does anyone know what that fucking thing is? You can, you open up the multiplayer window and, like, this person scored 8, 83,400 points. They're currently in the lead. Of what? I don't get that. Anyway. But some, some, if it's already in there, then explain it. That's what I would like. Anyway, so FM 2021 is going to come out soon. I'm going to be doing a series of it because I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about wasting thousands of hours of my life on something that will never pay me any money, um, which is the goal of my life. Um, all right, you little nuggets. Those are my hopes for FM. Pre-order. Give them some money. Bye.